Fairies are a tale of childhood. Just kidding. Fairies are a tale for all of us in adulthood right now. Whether or not you believe in fairies, and depending on how mystical and magical you want to get today, we've got an episode coming for you right now talking about fairies and tarot. We know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome to today's episode of Expedition to Soul. I'm Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted. Y'all, we are almost at 800,000 um, podcast downloads, and that is such, it feels like such a big number, like 800,000 times our podcast has been played in people's ears. And I think that is wild. So make sure to share the podcast with your friends. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts because it really helps, um, you know, push it out for other people to experience as well. So today it is May. If you're listening to this in real time, it's May 2nd. So we're in that Beltane energy and Beltane is this time of like fantastical, wild, fairy free sort of nature element energy. And today's episode is a it's a replay clip of a old class from our archives on fairies and tarot. So whether or not you think this is a little too, a little too much for you, or you're like, this sounds amazing. I'm totally in for it. Listen in because there are some great tarot tips coming your way in this episode and also some great ways to bring the sense of delight and wonder and mysticism and this childlike imagination to your everyday life. And if that's not everyday magic, I don't know what is. So go ahead, kick back and listen in. Hey there, it's Sarah here with the Sisters Enchanted, and uh, I am bringing you our fairies and tarot class as part of Tarot School with the Sisters Enchanted. So if you are here, then you may have some experience or some knowledge surrounding fairies, some experience with fairies, or maybe you're just really open to learning about the fairies. Um, sorry, just as I start, my cat starts meowing around my feet. Um, so this class is going to teach you um, a little bit about fairies, so some background information on fairies, how to incorporate that knowledge into tarot readings, um, and some really cool and unique ways to kind of get to know your tarot cards better, deepen your tarot practice through your, your fairy knowledge. Excuse me. Um, so that's what we're going to do here today. Um, so I have the workbook and some notes with me also. So if you see me looking away, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, and we're just gonna get started. So um, fairies to begin with are, um, they're elemental creatures and they are just like, they're similar to, when we call upon them, similar to other gods, goddesses, divine beings. Um, and we can call upon fairies to help us with manifesting they're amazing manifestors um, guidance just like we would anything anything else any other divine being or spiritual being um, that you may call upon or speak to so fairies though they are unique in that they are truly protectors of our of the environment uh, nature and in animals so they kind of you know focus more on that natural part of our world um, and so what we know about elements, especially if you've taken the tarot and the elements class with us, is that the earth, right? The earth is kind of, and we think of the pentacles suit, which is the earth suit in our tarot deck. Um, that's, a, that's our material things, right? Our physical, tangible things, our physical self, our actual beings, our health, um, health of our bodies, uh, the, the physical things, money, career, all that tangible stuff in our life. And so fairies, being the kind of protectors, the guardian angels of Earth, um, that's that's their thing. That's their their uh, their major focus, right? That's their game. The, um, 
that material stuff. So they are amazing to call upon and work with when you are manifesting or if you were to be doing some kind of tarot reading that centers around that material stuff, um, physical well-being, any kind of manifesting work with tarot, fairies are going to be your jam. They're where you want to be and who you want to talk to um, when you're seeking that divine guidance. Um, I apologize. My cat is driving me crazy. So there are different fairies. Um, now you may be wondering, like, how do you come to know about this stuff? So a lot of it is lore. So there are fairies across cultures and time. Um, you know, depending on what, what different books you read, you could read, you know, um, kind of old Irish, Gaelic, Celtic literature, um, uh, even in old Spanish literature, you, you're going to find fairies somewhere along the line, um, whether they're represented as a, a divine being or just in story form, you're going to run across fairies throughout culture, throughout time, history, the whole bit, you're going to find fairies. Right, so there are some common kind of fairies that we come across, and those are the fairies that um, are in your that I mentioned in your workbook. Some of the fairies that you could call upon. So one example, oh my gosh, my cap is, <laughs> would be excuse me. One example would be um, Anya. So she is the fairy. She's a fairy queen, and she is associated with fertility and abundance. So Anya would be a fairy that you could directly speak to or directly call upon, right? Um, if you are doing a reading and you want to you want to seek guidance from a specific fairy um, being, fairy like deity. So she would be the queen that you would, she'd be one that you could call upon. Um, another would be the green man. So if you um, are familiar at all with um, witchcraft, then you've probably heard of the green man. So the green man is representative of trees. So he's like the, the spirit god of trees. So he um, oversees the trees. Like he's the protector of that, uh, of those, um, you know, that living part of our earth. And so trees are grounded in earth, right? They're wise, they, they're old, they're, they reach up into the heavens, down through the earth, so they're connected in both ways. Um, so if you're doing a reading where you would want to seek some kind of extra wisdom, kind of divine guidance, but like you're still rooted in earth or some kind of physical things that are happening, then the green man might be somebody that you want to, to call upon. So while the green man's not a fairy, he is an elemental being. Um, so he kind of like lives in that fairy um, section of, uh, of spiritual things that you would call upon, right? Um, so there all, are all different ones, and there are a few in the workbook that you could call upon. Um, and of course, you can read books and find other figures as well. Um, so those are some basics with fairies. Let me just see my notes here. What else I want to talk about? Um, fairies are super playful, so they remind us to find the joy in our lives, to like reclaim our inner child, um, and have fun. So you might have heard kind of two sides to fairies. So there's like our Tinkerbell fairy, right, who is, but even Tinkerbell has two sides. So she's, um, kind of frisky, a little bit tricky, um, a little bit, she can be a little bit angry, but she's also really cute, right? <laughs> so, um... We have these two sides of fairies, and you'll see that in fairy tarot decks. If you look at fairy tarot decks, there's some that are very whimsical and light, and there's others that are a little bit darker in nature, um, and same with um, fairy oracle cards as well. So we have these two sides of fairies, and so some people will write about fairies as being really tricky, um, like the hide things, or um, like gnomes, that's another elemental being that would kind of reside with the fairies. Um, as you know, like can't find your car keys. Oh, believe it not, a fairy or a gnome. Um, but so really is what it is, is the fairies, it's because they are protectors of the environment, our physical earth and animals. So the idea is, is that when we don't treat our environment well, um, or animals well, that that's when the fairies are going to play tricks on us um, because, you know, we're not respecting their beliefs. So fairies are different than um, other 
spiritual beings in that they have egos. So they're kind of part on physical, on our physical earth realm and part in like the fairy realm. So I know that a lot of this probably seems really crazy, <laughs> uh, but just bear with me. So, um, so that's what makes them a little bit different from like calling upon angels would be that they can decide who they do and do not like where um, the idea is like God and angels, they're going to like everybody, right? Because they're forgiving and they're, um, they don't have egos. So they're selfless and they're beyond that. Well, fairies, because they have one foot here on our physical plane and one foot kind of in that spiritual fairy realm um, that they can choose um, who they like and who they don't like. So when we don't treat, you know, their home well, so their earth well, um, that's when they become tricky to us. So um, the idea is, is that fairies, you know, you don't have to like be a vegan or, you know, be totally earth conscious, although, you know, there's nothing wrong with either of those things. And they're both actually great in my opinion. But, um, you know, as long as you just do your best. So you're mindful of recycling or you're mindful of eating um, food that's thoughtfully produced. Um, you know, the idea is, is that the fairies are going to be on your side then. Uh, and then if you are missing something like your car keys, you can certainly call upon them to help you find them because they have that, again, they're attached to our physical, th our physical stuff, our physical world. Um, so they would be somebody that you could call upon to help you locate those missing items. Um, so again, there are a reminder to have fun, be playful. Um, fairies are thought to love sweets. Um, there's um, now fairy lights, twinkle lights are very popular um, in homes and decor and garden decorations. And it's not that fairies love like those little bright sparkly lights. Um, and like um, wind chimes, beautiful noise and music, flowers. Uh, so they're really just, it's a reminder of up to us to bring joy and playfulness and beauty into our lives. Um, let's see, anything else that I missed? So some other examples of other elemental creatures, I mentioned gnomes, um, the green man, it would be leprechauns, mermaids, these are all elemental type creatures. So um, if you are, you know, really, um, if mermaids are kind of your thing and where you find yourself, this information can apply to that as well. Um, so while I don't know of a mermaid tarot off the top of my head, there are, I mean, there probably is one because there's tarot for everything, but um, I can think of a couple of like uh, mermaid and um, green man and unicorn oracle decks um, and certainly a ton of fairy ones, but off the top of my head, I can't think of a mermaid tarot. But those, so those are all elemental um, kind of creatures that would fall in with your fairies. So we talked about calling upon the fairies. So you can call upon the fairies in your daily life or when you're doing a reading for guidance, just like you might call upon any other divine spiritual being. Um, when you purchase a fairy tarot deck, if you were to purchase a fairy tarot deck, um, some of them come just like a standard Rider weight deck where you're going to have pentacles. Um, they might be coins, cups, swords, wands. Um, others are going to go by the seasons. So you're going to have winter, summer, spring, and autumn or fall for your suits. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit different. So you have spring for your wands. Cups is summer, autumn is pentacles, and winter is your sword suit. Um, and that's obviously because the fairies represent our physical world, right? And um, nature, and so it makes sense to couple the fairies with the seasons rather than the um, traditional suits. Although, as I said, some of the fairy tarot decks do couple with the traditional suits. So if you are working with a traditional rider weight deck, but you want to channel some fairy energy, you can certainly kind of in your mind's eye um, relate the seasons to the suits and use that information um, with the suit when you're doing the reading. So, you know, you would take what you know about um, 
autumn, right? So autumn is a time where, like the, when we go into fall, we're kind of celebrating that harvest time, which is very earth-centered, right? So when we're looking at our pentacles, we can keep that harvest in mind and look at our readings from that perspective. I mean, we even see that towards the end of the pentacles suit, um, where there is harvest and abundance, right? Um, so we can look at the whole suit from that kind of fairy perspective of what's happening to the earth in autumn. And so if you aren't using a fairy tarot deck, that's totally fine. You can still use your, ter your fairy knowledge in interpreting your tarot reading. Um, and then obviously if you're using a fairy tarot deck, you can just go with, um, you know, what's represented on the card there. Um, so fairy tarot decks are typically going to be more nature oriented, um, featuring flowers and animals, um, obviously fairies, and they tend to be a little bit lighter, like more whimsical in nature than a standard Rider Waite deck. Um, that's not always the case. There is a Celtic fairy tarot that's the tone, the color tones are darker, um, so they don't have that kind of light airy um, nature to them. But that's totally cool. So that's fine also. That gives that kind of two sides of the fairy. So some, you know, that view that fairies are really have your back. And then that view that fairies can be a little bit mean and tricky. Um, so it's just a different representation. Um, but the same idea. So this is the Victorian fairy tarot. And you'll see even the back of the deck features a harp. And it's the idea of that beautiful music and that sound and that playfulness of fairies um, with some, some flowers up here. Uh... And yeah, so that's how you can use your regular traditional tarot deck, but still keep in mind like the seasons for the suits when you're doing a reading if you are trying to work with some fairy energy. Um, some special ways to care for your cards if you're working with the fairy energy. So what this isn't special in particular to fairies, but a great way to charge your cards is to put them out in the moonlight, so on a full moon. Um, and so that's amazing when you're working with fairy energy though, because you are obviously outside, kind of in that outdoor space, which would be the, you know, comfortable space, space and environment of the fairies. Um, and you are in that nice glittery light, right? That charging moonlight. So you can place them outside under the moonlight. Another way that you can charge up your tarot deck if you're working with fairy energy, and this is any tarot deck, would be to place, um, your tarot cards on a bed of time um and you can put it on like um a windowsill which is kind of an in between in between place and because fairies live with one foot in our physical realm and one foot in their own fairy realm um so to speak uh you know windowsills are that or like doorways are an in-between space you're like you know leaving one place and going into another place um <clears throat> so Thyme is a great magical herb that um, it can help clear negative energies, remind us, like replace bad dreams with great, happy, joyful dreams. Um, it's used in spell work for those kinds of same things, like switching out that bad energy for good energy. Um, and that's, again, a reminder of the fairies, right, to be playful and joyful in our lives. And so charging up your tarot deck on a bed of time in a windowsill is amazing. And then to even make that even more powerful would be to charge up your tarot deck um, on Halloween or on May 1st. So these two dates, um, and if you follow uh, any kind of magical path, you will know that these are two significant, significant holidays um, for the witchy folk. Um, and... On these two days, it's when the veil is the thinnest between our physical realm and the spiritual realms. So on May 1st and Halloween, October 31st, it's especially powerful to charge up your tarot deck um, if you are harnessing fairy energy on that bed of time, kind of in an in-between spot, so like a windowsill, um, and take advantage of that amazing um, time and energy um, to charge up your your tarot decks with some great pharaoh, great fairy energy. Um, you can also leave your tarot deck um, when you're doing this with like a little gift to the fairies. So some chocolate chips because they love sweets or um, like a little bell or a crystal. They love beautiful things like 
flashy sparkly crystals and glitter. So, um, you know, some pretty little crystals or some chocolate chips or something. You can put it as like an offering to the fairies as well with your deck that you're charging up. So those are some other ideas for you. Um, so some ways that you can use your fairy knowledge in your tarot readings. So one we already talked about would be calling upon that, that fairy energy when you're doing readings. Um, you can talk if you're doing a reading for another person who's interested in fairies or elementals. You can certainly pass along this information to them while you're doing the reading or if you're using a traditional tarot deck um, or a non-fairy tarot deck, you can talk about those seasonal meanings um, to the suits while you're doing the reading. So that's, you know, handy to know. Uh, if you took our path walking class, then um, fairy tarot decks are amazing to use for that experience because they typically, um, I have not seen a fairy tarot deck that doesn't have you know, a scene to the, to each card. So it's a really great, um, this one here says the 10 of summer and that would just be, you know, such a fun card to do a path walking experience with. And then if you are using a non fairy tarot deck, you can still do a path walking experience and kind of, you know, bear in mind that you're channeling that fairy energy and see who you come across in that um, journey, right? See what fairies come up to you. Um, you can, if you're using your tarot cards for any kind of manifesting work, so if you're picking a card on purpose to place on a sacred space or an altar for manifesting purposes, um, certainly the fairies are amazing manifestors, like I mentioned before. So channeling that, pharaoh, that fairy energy um, when you're doing manifesting work with tarot, that's a great way to incorporate the two together. And finally, getting outside to do readings. So that's just fun to do anyway. Um, it's great to get outside and harness that outdoor energy, but especially if you are trying to bring fairy energy into your readings because, you know, that's their playground. That's where they live. That's their home. So that is, that's another way that you can incorporate your fairy work into your tarot readings. So here are some unique ways that you can actually do readings um, while working with the fairies. So one, and this may seem a little bit tricky to a beginner, but um, you can even practice it with yourself. So one would be to let the person who's asking the question, so if you're reading for somebody else, let them intuitively choose their own cards and place them down in front of you. So they're essentially picking the cards themselves, not obviously not looking at the cards, but from the back. So they're picking their cards and they're placing them however they feel like placing them. Um, and then it's, you know, up to you to interpret that reading. So what you would want to look for is, for instance, if they picked four or three cards, four cards, and they place them kind of like, uh, I can't really do it, but like if, if they were, you know, next to each other and kind of climbing up like a ladder, then that might be a progression of some sort. Um, if they placed like two cards together, one sideways and then another one, then maybe something's happening and this card's blocking this thing from happening. Um, you know, it's just practice and, and you'll, it'll come easier the more that you do it. But this has to do with channeling that fairy energy because the fairies remind us to live in the moment and be playful, right? And so letting the person who's asking the question um, really take charge of this and do it themselves, it's inviting you to be playful in your reading and creative, and it's inviting the person who's pulling the cards to um, take some ownership of their situation. And again, fairies have that kind of one foot in the physical world and one foot in the spiritual world. So they, um, you know, more than guidance, more than just guiding, they still are of the physical plane and are like, hey, you gotta, you gotta take care of your stuff, right? You gotta take care of your own life. So. It's putting a little bit of responsibility on the person who's asking the question to, um, you know, dig deep inside themselves and lay the spread and choose the cards. And then it's reminding you as the reader to be creative and be playful. So you can practice that with yourself too, just by pulling cards. Um, and when you do this, you want to place them face down. So as they're being placed, the person who's pulling the cards and creating the spread um, kind of top of mind they aren't seeing the cards that they're pulling. So you place them all face down and then flip them over once the spread is all laid out. So you can do that with yourself also. Just pull the cards intuitively, place them in front of you, and then flip them and read them. 
Um, another way would be to do a reading on the first day of each season, just like a general reading or even ask a question of the fairies. And again, um, that's because the fairies, you know, being elemental creatures and guardians of our natural environment, those transition times are perfect times to channel that fairy energy. And then anytime that you're doing a reading that's centered on the elements is a perfect time to, to work with the fairies. So in our elements class, there are examples of spreads that you can do just to focus on fire or water or earth energy or air. Um, and so if you're doing any kind of element spread or reading, certainly connecting with the fairies would go hand in hand with that. Um, you can bring more fairies into your life quite easily by creating a, a fairy garden. So a beautiful garden in your yard with, you know, flowers and bird feeders or wind chimes, um, some sparkly lights. You can also create a fairy circle in your yard. So just use stones, rocks, um, or acorns, whatever you have, natural elements, and actually create a ring. Um, and the idea is, is that's creating a place for the fairies to come and hang out inside that ring. Um, and if you find that there are natural rings developing in your yard, so like rings of mushrooms, um, then that, or a ring of flowers, then that would be where fairies are gathering, um, which is pretty cool. So you can create um, a fairy garden or a fairy ring or circle for the fairies to come hang with you. Um, the more fun that you're having, so singing and dancing in your home and in your life, the more fairies are going to come and hang out in your home. Um, and remember, those fairies are great manifestors. So, you know, have fun, let loose, sing and dance and laugh in your house and invite those fairies in because um, you want them there. And uh, hanging out with your pets, if you have pets or just any animals. So, um, you know, caring for a pet or petting an animal, those are invitations for fairies to come into your life as well because you know remember they're the guardians of our animals and so when we're showing kindness to them they are going to come and hang with us so before i let you go i'm going to go over a few activities that you can do um to kind of not just up your tarot practice but your fairy tarot relationship i guess so one of the things which is pretty cool is to actually create a fairy tarot talisman or talisman, depending where you are in the world and how you pronounce it. Um, but so this might seem scary if you're not a crafty person. Um, I am crafty, but I'm not artistic, I don't think. Um, so this seemed a little scary to me at first, but I promise it's super fun. So you can just buy some like modeling clay at a craft store, nothing fancy. Um, and you can actually create a little fairy tarot figure. So if you have a fairy tarot deck, um, you can choose. So here I have the King of Autumn in this deck. So you can actually create like a little King of Autumn from the deck. So recreate this person if this is significant to you. Um, and the idea is, is that as you're creating something, you're putting your energy into it, right? And your intentions. So you can channel that fairy energy coupled with your energy when you're making this. Put it all together into this little, you know, item that you can keep on your tarot reading space or your sacred space um, to bring that energy in when you need it. So you can choose a person from your fairy tarot deck, or if you are using just a regular tarot deck, um, non-fairy tarot, or like a Lenormand deck, or not a Lenormand deck, I don't know why I said that, a Rider Waite Smith deck, um, you can pick somebody from this deck. So for instance, if you wanted to do strength, maybe you would make a little lion and a person. Um, you could even add fairy wings to the person to make them, you know, more in line with that fairy energy, which would be totally cool too. Um, and if you don't want to use modeling clay, I mean, you could use felt. Um, so it doesn't have to be three dimensional. You can just draw something, whatever feels good to you. But it is pretty cool to get out the clay and try and do this because um, it really gets you thinking and it's really kind of like a meditative experience also. So I highly recommend trying to do it with modeling clay. Um, another thing that you could do is actually go out in your yard and create a fairy ring. Um, you can create a little traveling fairy kit. So you can have this with you kind of in your car or wherever you go and you're doing um, tarot readings. And you might want to incorporate that fairy energy into that tarot reading. 
So this kit could have crystals, maybe like some little chocolate chips in a jar, you know, so they don't get all funky in there. <laughs> um, uh, a little bell maybe, some tea light candles, or like, you know, as you're traveling, maybe the battery operated tea light candles, but a little fairy tarot travel kit. So you can always have those um, little items to symbolize the fairies to you when you're doing your readings. Um, you could do a fairy meditation and see who you meet, see if there's one fairy that comes up to you frequently and so that's you know your fairy that you're working with um, and there is a fairy meditation included with this class you could do that one or create your own or um, just quietly meditate and see what comes to you um, without any kind of guided path you could also write a fairy tarot story so if you don't have a fairy tarot deck I mean, you can do this with a fairy tarot deck as well. It's one of the practices that we do when we teach tarot um, is to lay out your cards in order and write a story. So write the major arcana story and write the story of each of the suits. So you can do that with your fairy tarot deck. And if you have just a different tarot deck that you're using that doesn't have fairies, you can do the same thing. But as you're writing the story, um, kind of bear in mind those natural elements and that protectiveness of the environment and kind of, you know, being good to the earth and yourself and being joyful and fun and playful, but you're in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm, the physical plane. So it's important to still be mindful of the stuff that we actually have to do in our responsibilities every day. Um, so keeping all this ter these fairy knowledge in mind, you know, write the story from that perspective. So with that kind of fairy energy in mind. And that will just help you to get to know your decks from kind of that fairy standpoint. So if you want to do readings and channel that fairy knowledge, you know, you will be prepared to do that. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Expedition to Soul. I hope you enjoyed it because I remember distinctly teaching this class. This is from like 2017 or 2016, actually, I think fall 2016. I don't know. We're almost seven years old here at the Sisters Enchanted, just a couple weeks this month. And this is a huge throwback for me. And it was really fun checking this one out. My cat makes an appearance. And I just, I remember the days when <laughs> I would record videos and my cats would come in and out. And those of you who've been with us for all seven years, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it more than you know. It's quite the it's quite the feat to not only, you know, help people through intention and intuition and everyday magic, but to pour yourself out on the line like those of us here at Team TSE do every single week again and again and again, hoping to surprise, delight, bring some some change to people's lives and empower folks to really see what's within them that they can bring out to create that sense of everyday magic and enchantment for themselves. And this was a real joy throwback for me. All right, fairies and tarot. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for some more TSE action, Sisters Enchanted action, be sure to head to our website, check out our emails, our Instagram profile. These are all great places to figure out what it is that we're doing right now. Um, you can join us in a free five-day journal class that we have coming up. We'll be sure to link that up for you. And of course, we're emailing it. And like I said, you can find it in all the places. So we'd love to have you join us for that journal program. And always you can join us in holistic witchery as well and really take everything you're doing to the next level. And you can learn about that at holisticwitchery.com. But for now, thanks so much for being part of our community. Seven years strong, hundreds of thousands of people and almost 800,000 podcast downloads. Until next time, I hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters enchanted.com. And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted, and we'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.